No, we were we were usually at least a um, hundred to two hundred yards away from it. We we weren't that close to whoever's calling it in, forward observer calling that stuff in. It's, uh, they're, they're, they're pretty sure that we, we wouldn't get hit by it. Occasionally it would happen, but it wasn't because of accuracy, because of not all rounds go where they're supposed to go. So I mean, it sounds like you're, you guys kind of were still doing the stuff that we taught our Marines to do, which was uh, if you're hit, self-aid, then if there's a Marine around you, buddy aid, then get to us to do the major treatments. Yeah. One of the, one of the things I disagreed with is that uh, when we were landing, if, if somebody's down, leave them. <laughs> hey, I ain't leaving anybody. I, mean, I don't want them leaving me. Yeah. No, that's. <laughs> but it didn't have it. Didn't happen. But yeah, they were trying to, you know, make sure you get ashore. And if somebody's down, don't wait. Don't try to pick them up. Just go keep going. But, yeah, that's a that's yeah. a hard choice to make. I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody listened to them. Yeah, I I would hope no one did. I, I understand sure. why they say that, but it's it's not a real choice to make. Well, it would be, I guess, it would be, realistically, it would be, because you need to get to shore, you know, you get to right. set up an establishment on shore where you're safe and can fight. But, and then by the, by the, if you get that established, then somebody can go back and pick up somebody that's wounded. Right. But, and that, that doesn't happen in real life. No. So now, that guy's your buddy. Oh, go ahead. No, I said that guy's your buddy. Oh, yeah. You've been yeah. through, you know, sort of training and everything. You made a friend. You're not leaving your friend laying there in a pool. No, not at wherever. all. So now you, um, you guys got your beachhead going and you finally start moving out. The way that it was always described to me, and I looked it up last night, I didn't realize how far from the beachhead to where the chosen reservoir was, that it was quite a distance away. Oh, it was, uh, oh, it was, maybe 50 to 100 miles, that's a long way. It wasn't anywhere near there. Yeah, I, I guess it took I'm us just- long, it took us a couple of months I don't think we got to, I don't think we got to there until about the middle of November. It was a couple of months to get there. And we, you know, we were in, um, off and on, you're in, in fighting and you know, some combat. Um, I don't think, uh, for some reason, I don't think they kept, I think they kept this in reserve a lot of time. I didn't really see a lot of combat between there, but it was some, and it was sporadic. Do, do you remember your first um, engagement? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And it was, <laughs> we were, you know, we, we were told to dig in, of course, and come nightfall, we're going to dig in. And we were in a place where you couldn't dig, <laughs> more rock than soil. And I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm not going to get very deep here. But uh, you know, we try and find a location to dig in, but because some of it was kind of useless. So how did how did that night go then? It was um, it was it was scary. Or when you you know you don't know you have no idea what's going to happen, so it's it's kind of frightening. You see a lot of stuff at night; it's not even there. Yeah, I I know exactly what you're talking about. Did you were you guys um, on this first engagement? Were you guys on patrol, or were you guys ambushed? Did they come looking for you, or did you guys find them? 
No, we were, we were, we were moving forward. Um, we were headed north, I guess, north, and uh, we engaged. We engaged them. Uh, they were. Um, they were entrenched, I guess you'd call it. But we had um, we had good air support. As long as, as long as the weather was good, we had air support and made a, made all the difference in the world. Um, the, those guys, those guys flying uh, mostly flying uh, P fifty ones, but uh, Corsairs also, and uh, we liked uh, and the. As it turns out, we like the Corsairs better because they could stay over the target longer. But oh, okay. you know, they were a little bit slower and could make a quicker loop around. But at the the uh, napalm that they would use and the uh, uh, the firepower they had, it was it uh, it was so much. If they would have had the same firepower in the air against us it would have been it would have been bad probably would have beat us oh really so at at this point in time um when you get into this first engagement obviously it went well in general you're you're still talking to us what was oh yeah <laughs> what was the um what was your mind like afterwards, after all the fighting died down and, and that evening or that morning? Well, it, it um, we were kind of excited about it in a way. Uh, I guess it's kind of like a kid riding a, a joy ride at a, at a fair or something, and you, you live through it. And you thought, man, that was, that was something. We did a lot of talking amongst ourselves afterwards they were kind of happy to be alive and then it um, uh, some of the guys so a few people got, were wounded um, uh, a couple of guys not too many people got killed thank goodness but um, you got, it, it was kind of like, you, you, you live through it and you think, you know, we can, you know we're going to make it. We can, we, can, we can win this. Up until that time, you were more, more scared than anything else. I mean, we were, you know, we, we were just, uh, we didn't think of ourselves as being 19 years old or something. You know, you think, I'm a big guy. I'm, tough guy now but underneath you knew that you were just a, just a guy right. you were, you're not really a, a combat soldier or anything but so did you have any um uh, any veterans with you guys from world war ii or who had been in five or six years longer than you it was there was um uh, I knew of only one guy that was a, a sergeant who had been in for a long time, and he stayed a sergeant because he kept getting busted. <laughs> he was an alcoholic, but 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 he did have he did have combat time. He did know what he was, you know. He knew the right things to say to uh, keep us calm and, mot and motivated. He was he was from Crockett, Texas. Nice. So was, was the majority of your unit uh, from Texas then? Yeah. Um, well, I had some, quite a few from Louisiana. Um, uh, most of them were from Texas. Most of them were all uh, the reserves from Texas. Oh, okay. So... During this time, as you're moving through, um, going to where you're ultimately going to end up at the Chosen Reservoir, are you interacting with or coming across the civilian population? Yeah, yes. Yeah, that was, it was um, the uh, civilian population. Of, uh, some of them were helping us. 
they were carrying uh, sea rations, um, carrying a lot of stuff that saved us from carrying it. I don't think, I don't, don't know if they were carrying ammunition or not, but they were carrying a lot of, a lot of supplies. Um, and there were a lot of, uh, these, these guys were older. They were probably 40s or 50 years old. They weren't, I guess they were too old to be in the army or whatever, but I had the, I had the feeling that they were, after, not at first, but after a long time, probably a year later, I was thinking these guys doing all this work for us, but probably telling everybody on the other side where we were and what we had. So, you know, <laughs> so they, they were Koreans, even though we were fighting the other Korean. So that's what I was going to ask and, you. And this, this, this is before the Chinese ever got into it. So it was so all I was, Koreans. That, so the Koreans that you, that, uh, where you guys came in, that was by today's standards, North Korea, right? Like today's map, you got Pusan's in North Korea. Is it still South Korea or is it North Korea at that point in time? Uh, it's um, it's right at it's right at the thirty eighth parallel. Uh, it may have been. I think it's north of the thirty eighth parallel. Okay, J just That's just for right. reference. In China, I think it is it's on the west coast. Okay, so. Yeah. How you said it took you a couple months to get to the reservoir. Yeah. When you guys finally got there, like you said, I think you said it was mid to late uh, November. And you had mentioned earlier that the weather was not bad when you guys landed. No, uh -uh. it wasn't bad at all. No, it was, it was some, still summertime. Um, it got cooler at night, but it was night. It was okay. Um, it didn't get cold. Of course, every the further north we went, the, the cooler it got, and it, it also I think the altitude was everything. Thing was seemed like everything you did was uphill. <laughs> That's like every, not a good thing. Every seemed like every battle we got into in the in the daytime was uphill which wasn't any fun. So prior to getting to the reservoir, were you guys um, getting resupplied with uh, cold weather gear or anything? Because I know the name for a lot of you is the Frozen Chosen. Yeah, we got, uh, we got, well, they brought up, some, it's amazing how much stuff they had over there. Uh, the trucks, the tanks, Artillery. I mean, it, it's amazing how much how much they had over there. It's, um, they had tanks. They had tanks with uh, a blade on the front of it, like a bulldozer, to make roads to make uh, kind of make roads. And I don't know if they did that because of the the snow, or they may have had them before that. So, anyway, so, the stuff we saw was so kind of surprising. So, speaking of um, snow and um, road building, did you guys work with the CBs at all? Were they, were they out there doing construction and building roads or airfields that you saw? Yeah, they built. Um, I remember they built an airfield at one time. And I think, I'm trying to think when that was. Um, I know they were working on the airfield, but I don't know who was building it, whether it was the CBs or not. Who should, by the way, be the second favorite Navy the people. Army was it Navy people doing it? Uh, I, I don't know I, for I, sure. I assumed, it, I, thought, I assumed it was engineers building it. Because that, yeah. uh, you just... Oh. I didn't know the CBs were building anything. I'm not 100% sure. That's why I was, I was curious if you had run it into could anything. Be. Yeah, we, nobody tells us anything. <laughs> but the, <laughs> we're the, the, we're the land. 
the the new thing is corpsmen are your favorite for the marines and the second favorite navy people are are the cbs because they build you guys uh good barracks <laughs> <laughs> so when you finally got up to the reservoir and little did you know at the time that this would become some epic battlefield that the marines still talk about today what was your impression of the place that you guys were supposed to hold what the hell are we doing here i mean it's you know if you're going to win a war you should win something you, you know that if somebody gave you that whole area of the world you wouldn't take it i mean if, if <laughs> It's not. It's a nothing. It's a big zero. And they, and everybody would say, you know, what the hell are we doing here? You just you just keep fighting and fighting and fighting and pushing people back until you finally get where you're going. And when you get where you're going, you think, why am I here? This is stupid. I never. I, and I still don't know why they did it. So was there any value to that land? Other than a big reservoir, oh, they, well, they wouldn't for the people who live there. They, uh, uh, I suppose, they made a reservoir for it. Well, anybody makes a reservoir so you'd have water supply, and uh, I think that was a man-made thing anyway, like most of them are. Yeah. Uh, but what, what, what do we want with it? By the time we got there, it was solid ice anyway. Nobody's drinking that water. So now that we've reached that, so you're up there. It is now no longer warm. <laughs> it is now from oh, it got it, and it just uh, it happened that quick. It was it was cool. It had gotten cold because of the time of the year, but then it got ridiculous. It just uh, it got what I told everybody was 60 below. And uh, when I, I thought about that later on, I think I wonder if I'm lying. <laughs> so I went and looked it up on a computer and it gets to be 70 below. So I may have been telling the truth in that case. And then I've seen um, stories about it was 50, 50, 55 below. Well, you can't tell the difference between 10 below and 40 below. It's, oh, yeah. It's a point where it's out of human recognition. It's just... And then some of the, some of the things that happened were, were really bad. Um, carbines wouldn't even fire. They got frozen. Um, or the, the M1 still worked. And one of the problems was um, in your bandolier where you had your extra rounds, those things would be frozen. You know, just think, God, I'll put this in there, fire, is, is it going to work or not? <laughs> Oh wow! But uh, I, uh, uh, one of the, you know you remember strange things. Yeah, uh, definitely. The water in your canteens are frozen. You got to go find a, a something a, something that's running a motor that's running so you can put your canteen by it to thaw it out so you can drink. And then you think, God damn, the water's cold. <laughs> <laughs> So now, how so, long how long were you guys up there before um, everything went bad? Uh, about about maybe two weeks. When that we had uh, we had a Thanksgiving meal which I thought was a miracle. And, um, and I think the next day it was, it was, they, they overran it. They demolished us the next day. It was when the Chinese got into it. And that's when it was, that's when it got really scary. Cause 
you know, they, they gave us extra bandoliers of ammunition. And when you got 80, 160 rounds, you think, man, is that going to be enough? And then you wonder who the hell's got the, we had plenty of ammunition. But you didn't always know where exactly where it was. Oh, okay, yeah. Somebody, somebody, somebody knew where it was, but we didn't know who the somebody was all the time. Because you get a lot of confusion going on. So now, did you guys? And this may have been way above your pay grade, but was there any indication that things were about to go really bad, or did they just no. go real bad immediately? Just kind of immediately, it just happened. You know, think, God, the hell, the hell, where the hell did he come from? I mean, they they got the same conditions we are, and 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 they were less uh, dressed preparedly than we were. I mean, they were stuff they were wearing. I don't, I don't know how they even lived. I don't know why they didn't all have frostbite immediately. Oh, really? Yeah. So they weren't. Oh, I was just going to ask. So when this happened, I know it's a really mountainy, ruggedy area. So what was when you guys first realized something bad was happening? How far was the standoff between where our lines were and and the the Chinese and the Koreans moving on us? Was it far enough away where it was a lot of uh, indirect fire at that time? Or did they just kind of come out of nowhere and? It just, uh, most of the time they were coming at night. Um, we had, uh, we had uh, daylight to uh, recollect us things and get, you know, take inventory of what, you know, what we needed to do and load up and everything. But when they came, it was, it was, uh, I think their psychology that they were doing was was helping them quite a bit, all screaming and hollering the whistles and all that BS that they did. But I also think they were on drugs or high on something because they were very erratic. They didn't uh, they didn't protect themselves. I mean, it's, it's, it was almost like they were on a suicide mission, they were like kamikaze uh, when they came at us. So were they more acting like an insurgent force rather than a, an you know organized army force then? Just throwing no, bodies? They were, they were organized uh, for a long time. They were definitely organized, whoever was planning that to come in order to do the strike. Um, and it was um, probably when we decided to get out of there, um, I don't know whether it's because they lost so many people, but they were, they were a little bit disorganized and they were like insurgents. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know who kept them uh, organized at all. Compared to the, what they were at first. So, if you don't mind, what was a night like um, once this kicked off for you? I obviously, you guys were probably living in foxholes um, in snow, but what? Yeah, the, the the weather was worse than anything. Uh, well, I think most people were scared. Of, freezing to death or, get, or losing toes or fingers, or ears and whatever from frostbite after a while, because even if they didn't, if nobody attacked, you still had that. Right. You still, you know, that was, uh, that was a concern 24 hours a day where they were only concerned about eight hours a day. That makes sense. So did you guys have, um, like, Again, going back to the corpsman, were, were they able to provide any care for you guys uh, with the frostbite? Was there a battalion surgeon out there taking you guys back and getting you guys treated? 
yeah, they were always, um, there, there was always a, a, an evacuation plan to take, uh, to take people out that were wounded or, or with frostbite. Um, as far as uh, whether they had any surgeries, I don't know because I never, never, I was never in that with those people. Oh, okay. I, I avoided, avoided being injured and avoided frostbite and just happened to be very lucky. And it so, wasn't because I was a great shot or anything. It just, it's a matter of luck. 